Good morning. It's Leanne Peters here. I'm from templeofbalance.com.au, Temple of Balance on Facebook and Temple of Balance on YouTube. And I'm here to pull some cards and share some guidance for this week ahead. That's this week starting Wednesday the 24th of August through till Tuesday the 30th of August 2022. We've got a little visitor who's purring madly. Oh, you're not crappy with me this morning. She hasn't really liked coming in for our videos the last few weeks. This is Puss. She's happy to be sitting here. So I want to send out an extra special welcome to my Temple of Balance patrons, my Pillar of Light family, and all of those of you who support my work through my website. Thank you so much for your support. If you're new to watching, welcome. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today, once I get the cat hair off my lips, uh, is I'm going to be using my Oracle cards, my Speed of Light Oracle combined with my Animal Kingdom Oracle cards. And I'll be looking for the best cards for this week ahead. Um, I'm not pulling cards for individuals. This is general guidance for everyone. So I trust that you've been led here for a reason and I trust it's something shared supports you at this time and during this week ahead. So uh, let's get started. So I'm just going to shuffle and we'll see what comes up. So a quick reflection on last week's theme card or theme energy. Last week's theme was to get serious about our boundaries. So did you need to get serious about your boundaries last week? So we're now turning our attention to this new reading week, Wednesday the 24th through till Tuesday the 30th of August 2022. I'm coming to you live from Tasmania, Australia, where it is Wednesday the 24th here, and it's exactly 9.23 a.m. So the best cards that the majority of us need for this week ahead are... Um, we'll get to them in a second. Okay, the best cards for this week, the 24th till the 30th of August 2022 are these. So I'm just going to duck down here and uh, lay these out face down and then I will turn them over. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four animal kingdoms and uh, three speed of light oracle so let's turn these over oh we've got two cards that we had last week three cards we had last week four cards we had last week out of seven interesting we've got one featured timing card which is here it's the seasonal cycle and it has further instructions here which say to take the third card from the top of the deck so we're going to get another same card. No, delegate. We haven't seen this for a long time. Okay, so we've got that. I'll talk about that shortly. So it's going to be a bit of a repeat, a little bit from last week because of all these four cards. So four cards now out of eight that are repeats. So and out of 110 cards, like the chances of that are actually quite low. So uh, we've got similar energy really running through that we had last week flowing through into this next week. But let's get into it. Wednesday, the 24th of August, we've got the crocodile card five. And the crocodile says to stand in your survival power. So this is, there is a feeling here of continuing to plod along. So you might find in some areas of your life at the moment that and especially Wednesday, that maybe there's not a lot of progress being made Maybe there's a pause button that's been pressed. Maybe you're losing enthusiasm or motivation to keep going. Maybe things aren't really working out the way you hoped. Maybe there's been um, a reneging of some sort, which seems to be strong uh, in this last day or so, is this hot, cold energy. You know, as things are going, proceeding, green light's on, then the red light comes on, then the green light comes on again. So there's all this sort of weird energy around and I think uh, from what I sense here it's going to continue so let's remember on Wednesday to keep plodding along let's keep going let's keep plodding along Let, let's not take things too personally or lose ourselves in the delays or the obstacles that may be presenting themselves this week 
because it certainly showed up Monday, Tuesday, now Wednesday. And now for Thursday, we've got the card that actually is the card that came up last week for Tuesday, the 23rd, which may still be Tuesday for you. And that's scattered. And this energy has been very interesting this last sort of 24-ish hours, 24, 36 hours. Um, so it's scattered. It's card 13. And it says overwhelm, uh, confusion, concentrate and plan. So this is an unscattered, uh, uh, sorry, unscattered. It's a scattered energy, an unsettling energy that's present for Thursday it was also present for Tuesday and it's most likely still present on Wednesday. So this thing, um, you know, things may feel a bit unstable. We may be unsure about how we feel about something or how someone else feels about something that um, is important to us. We may um, not get information yet that we've been waiting on. So there is this feeling here of feeling a bit unsettled, not really knowing uh, where the cards are going to fall um, or with how things are going to sort of uh, work out for us at this time. Now, a really interesting, th there's a couple of interesting things about this card. One of them is that it's talking about temporary energy. So it's a temporary state, this feeling of scatteredness. So sometimes when, in fact, often when we're in the middle of that scattered, unset unsettled energy, it can feel permanent for some weird reason, even though we may have felt fine a couple of days before and we will feel fine a couple of days to follow. But it's a temporary energy. So let's remind ourselves that if we're getting a little bit too bogged down with the unsettledness of the nature of the energy right now. The other thing about this card, which is interesting, is that it brings new, uh, new things into our life. So it's like raw primal energy that hasn't taken form yet. So, you know, like an idea that kind of seeds into our mind or that comes in to our heart and we have this idea and it's just like this loose form of something. And then the more we think about it, the more we talk about it and the more action we take on it, we can start bringing that idea, that thing that was formless into form. And that's what this energy is about too with this scattered card is it's the formless energy. It's the energy, it's the ideas, the inspiration. It's that sort of raw primal energy that comes in before something manifests. So we might find this a really potent time too for potential new ideas and potentially looking at problematic areas of our life from a, a different perspective or, or finding solutions to problems that we have in life that maybe we couldn't find a solution before. So this primal energy that's coming in, that's coming uh, sort of on the back or the wave of this scatteredness, this chaotic kind of state, can actually bring with it quite fertile um, fertile thoughts. For, uh, for, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting all tongue-tied. Fertile thoughts, um, fertile inspirations and fertile moments, ideas that can actually sprout new things in our life in areas that have been feeling stagnant or stuck or that we've been challenged by. So don't be worried about this state because it, even though it feels unsettling, it contains a lot of fertility and a lot of potential within this temporary, scattered, unsettled state. So it's when we feel unsettled and, un and scattered like this that it actually can propel us to look at things in a different way. And that's where the sort of value is, I feel, in, in this sort of energy around Tuesday, the 23rd, but uh, especially too on Thursday, the 25th. So then we move to Friday, the 26th of August and we've got these two cards and the other thing too about that unsettled energy before I continue on is one it's temporary so let's keep reminding ourselves of that it's not going to last forever this is not permanent this is just a temporary phase if we're feeling quite un uh, very unsettled and overwhelmed by it um, another thing to really think about to help us through that scattered sort of state is to just do what we can to get through our day. We may need to put things on hold that aren't priority. So if we've got a ton of things to do on our list for Thursday, let's say, but we're feeling just not really connected when we're sort of a bit not really ourselves, 
maybe there is like half or three quarters of the things on our to-do list that we can just put aside and be okay just to put some things aside for a little bit and come back to it in a couple of days or next week or something when we can. So let's just do what we can to get through our day and take one day at a time when we're feeling scattered and things feel a bit messy and uncertain. So this is, uh, these are the cards for Friday the 26th and we've got these two cards. I've come up together for a reason. So we're going to talk about them separately, then we'll look at their relationship together. So this is card 54 called Seasonal Cycle. It's a featured timing card. So in the Animal Kingdom Oracle cards here, the, the lion on the front of the box, there are four featured timing cards. So this talks about a three month cycle. So we're looking at so the end of August. So we're looking at all of September, all of October and pretty much all of November. So we're looking at around a three month cycle that's going to be important for us around the end of this week. So we might be planning something for about the next three months time. We might be looking at the next three months. We might be looking at pretty much what's going to take place or what we want to do or what's happening for the rest of the year, we could pretty much say to the end of November. So it's around that three month period. And it's got to do with this delegate card 28. And it says to ask, plan, uh, organize and assistance. So this is about asking for help delegating chores and basically looking at where we put or where we feel where we're under pressure so it could be in work it could be at home it could be in relationships it could be some of the commitments that we have that we might feel especially by the end of the week and maybe we've been feeling it lately too that we feel like we're under pressure and that we're not really coping very well we may be on the verge of or already in overwhelm and if we're feeling overwhelmed, it's a sure, time, a sure sign that we need a break and we may need to look at the things that we're committed to and the obligations that we have and the pressure that we may even be putting on ourselves. So let's assess our pressure that we're under on Friday, if that's important to us. And also, um, let's not be afraid to ask for help and get a little bit more organised with our time so we can help reduce, potentially reduce our stress levels. So are there things you can do to help organise things a little better for yourself, to help clear your head and get you in a bit of a, a less stressful state? Is there help that you could be asking for or delegating to other people in your household or other people in your workplace that can help take the load off you? Don't feel that you have to do everything yourself. Ask for help, work together with others and let it be okay for you to receive help that you need. And sometimes it's easier to just say, well, I can just do it myself because sometimes it takes more time to explain to someone what you need help with. But I think in the long term, it's really important that we proactively communicate um, the help that we do need, especially assigning tasks and chores to children or people in the workplace if necessary. So this is a really important thing to protect. Keep tripping over my tongue this morning uh, to potentially consider on Friday over the next few months, where, where are you anticipating that you're going to be under pressure? You might have a lot of things coming up in September, for example, and you may be starting to prepare yourself now as I've, I've been doing. Um, so you might want to get things a bit organised, get some things sorted out so that you can be kind of ready to go as things happen that you know of in September. There might be things that you can ask people to help with as well. If you're moving house, for example, can you put the call out to a bunch of people um, and, and say, I'd really love some help on this weekend or whatever that I might be moving house. This sort of thing, if we can anticipate that we may need help, let's ask for it and let's let ourselves receive it and let's cooperate with the people that are helping us because there's nothing worse than um, asking if we can help someone and we help and then we don't do it right 
and that person we're trying to help is micromanaging or trying to control us and then we're not really going to want to help. So if you find that people don't really want to help you, just make sure you're not micromanaging or trying to control things to be your way. If other people are helping, they they kind of have to do it with their flair as well and in their way. We're all different the way we do things. So that's for Friday. But really, to keep in mind for the next few months, Puss has joined us again. Okay, Saturday the 27th, we've got the Jellyfish, card 55. And it says uh, vulnerable, flow, sensitive and protection. So there's a feeling of sensitivity potentially around on Saturday. We might feel quite touched, like deeply sensitive, maybe even a little vulnerable or fragile or, or quite uh, deeply touched, deeply connected um, on an emotional sensitive level potentially on Saturday. If we're worried about... Um, kind of losing ourselves we can also affirm our protection that we're safe and protected as we flow with our sensitivity and we do move through those ebbs and flows of sensitivity and it's not a bad thing to listen to our feelings how we feel and what's going on for us I like to allow myself to feel my way forward and I feel that's probably quite appropriate for Saturday so feel came up the week before actually it's card one the stallion it says to untie yourself so if you haven't got the message yet maybe this is the third time lucky and maybe on Sunday again we're being prompted again we're actually really lucky when we get repeat tests and we repetitive things when we get repeat a uh, repeated test we're quite lucky because there are actually opportunities for us to grow and to look at things in a different way and perhaps change things in our life that hasn't been working. So the stallion is about letting our wild spirit free. So where have you been feeling trapped or stuck or stagnant, perhaps tied down to a degree? Uh, where have you been feeling um, held back in your life? Now, most of the time we hold ourselves back. So it's probably more of a mental state that we're potentially getting into, uh, especially around Sunday, is this mental shift in um, allowing ourselves to be trapped or allowing ourselves to feel stagnant or stuck and shifting things around and looking at where can we free ourselves? Where can we untie ourselves? How can we access that wild, free, creative exciting motivated inspiring part of ourselves that sits inside we become adults and we become mature and tame and life kind of gets in the way things get in the way and we kind of lose our wild side and you know it depends what how we define that wild side but we lose a wild sort of quality um, about ourselves so it seems like at the moment, and especially for the month of August, that a lot of us are really considering um, our life and where things have been stuck, where we have been stuck, where we have been holding ourselves back and what we might be able to do to revive ourselves again, to untie, to, to access that wild free spirit within us. Has life become too mundane for you? How can you get a bit of adventure and excitement back in it? So that's for Sunday. Now, Monday, the 29th of August, we have the kangaroo from last week, card 10. And the kangaroo says to leap over the obstacle. So again, this is movement on Monday and we've got potential movement action here to get over obstacles that we may be facing. Um, <laughs> sorry I'm hearing weird noises outside and it's the, all the cockatoos in the trees um so we might find that we might find I, I feel I got this sense on Monday that we may feel a little time challenged so if we find time a bit of an obstacle too let's um, move with things instead of blocking things or getting in our own way let's trust in uh, the way things are unfolding and trust in perfect timing that we are being led to the right place at the right time. 
So leaping over the obstacle, lots of movement there. And then for Tuesday the 30th, we have the Yogi card 32. <laughs> card 32. It says Epiphany, Learn, Lead and Comprehend. This card did come up about two weeks ago, so it has shown up recently, even though it wasn't last week. But this is about learning and leading. So learning new skills, leading the way for others. And often these two things go hand in hand. So as you're learning, you'll probably find that you're leading the way somehow too, and maybe even leading the way for yourself, stepping into new territory, learning new things, uh, learning new skills. There is a sense of leading ourselves forward in our life as we're learning. Also, as we're leading or teaching other people, which some of us may find ourselves in, we can also, if we're open to it, be um, willing to learn to learn things from our students and from the people that we might be leading or teaching. There's also in this card is an epiphany. It's the penny dropping. It's the aha moment. I now see why I had to go through that or why this had to happen. There is a sense here of uh, things falling into place potentially on Tuesday. So we might be doing something quite mundane like driving a our vehicle cooking dinner or having a shower or something quite mundane quite every day when the penny drops and then we say ah that's why things had to happen in that succession in that in those synchronicities so don't be surprised if you have a bit of an epiphany and the epiphany that penny dropping brings with it clarity an understanding of the bigger perspective which is always valuable so that feels exciting. So thank you. There are all the cards for this week. I'm going to get ready now to pull our theme card. Before I do, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If you have enjoyed this connection, please hit the thumbs up button. Please show us some love. Please comment or share if you're inspired to. And if you would like to connect more privately, then please don't hesitate to send us a message through our website. Um, so I've got a few things coming up. Firstly, if you're in Tasmania, Australia, if you happen to be in this state, which not many of you are, but maybe one person is, um, I'm having an art exhibition this coming weekend on the 27th and 28th of August. It's the end of my, um, my month-long art residency that I've been very lucky to be a part of. I've been painting black swans all month. I must say I'm pretty much swanned out. By now, I've painted 10 paintings of black swans and it's been absolutely fun. But it's interesting, this last kind of painting, it's like, oh, the, you know, the swan thing. I think I'm definitely feeling it's the last. Um, but, yeah, I've created some pretty interesting black swans. So if you're in the area, I'm at Oatlands, um, 79 High Street in Oatlands, Tasmania, um, all weekend, all day su Saturday and all day Sunday until about three o'clock mid-afternoon. So if you're there, if you're not going, if you're not here in person, I do intend to do a live stream maybe Saturday morning or Friday morning um, to take you around the pieces that I've done and talk a bit about it too and take you around the really cool old building that I've been working in, my second home for August. It's been great. So that's that. I've also opened um, our next online art class is coming up on the 16th of September and their next card reading club on the 16th of September. You can also learn more about me and the work I do here at Temple of Balance on my website at templeofbalance.com.au. I've got earrings, pendants, my card decks, uh, artwork, lots of different things. In fact, my services that have been closed, like spirit guide drawings, email readings, are going to open again next week. So that's that, I think. So please visit my website if you'd like to learn more and if you'd like to support me. I am here because of you. I don't have any sponsors or anything. This is my full-time work for almost, well, 17 and a half years. Not quite, almost 18. Um, and it's I'm here because of your support. So if you enjoy what I do, please consider supporting it. So the best card I'm looking for now for our theme. The theme card will help us see the bigger picture for this week ahead 
And it's a good uh, thing to keep in mind for the week. I tend to keep the theme in the back of my mind all week long. And then I check in with the individual days, usually halfway through the week, over the weekend. So the best card for our theme for this week ahead, for the majority of us, uh, from the 24th of August through to the 30th, 2022, is this. It's an animal kingdom. And it's this. Yes, and this adds a light energy to the week. Last week's theme was the get serious about our boundaries, which was pretty intense. Whereas this card, number two, the butterfly, it's, it's a lighter energy. It brings forward joy. So there is potential joy accessible for us this week, which is nice and light. So even though we've got lots of repeat cards, it adds a lightness to the week ahead. So let's approach things this week as joyously, um, as grateful and as lovingly and as cooperative as possible. So there is a sense here too of personal transformation. So we might find some of us, especially if we've been doing a lot of uh, self-growth, a lot of self-healing, a lot of personal stuff that we're working through at the moment, there is a potential shift and a potential transformation and inner change that we might feel as we open our heart and we open ourselves to the truth. As we open ourselves to the truth, the cat is visiting again. It is my lucky day. So the truth, what is the truth? So we could talk about bigger picture truths, but we can also talk about the truth of who we are and really getting to know ourselves. What um, are our values? What are our ethics? What's important to us? But also on the other side, what's not important to us? What do we not like? What do we not want to be involved with? Because all of those things can also help propel us in toward, towards what we do like and what we do want and what we do value. So I like to look at all of this stuff from all sorts of angles, even the stuff that I don't like. There are things, there are traits, there are there is stuff that I personally don't like and I don't want to be associated with. I don't mind if you do these things, but I choose not to. Like, for example, I choose not to drink coffee. I don't, I've never even tried it. I've decided from a very young age I don't want to try it because I saw role models in my life be addicted to it. And you couldn't even speak to them until they had their coffee. And I didn't understand that as a child. So from a very young age, I was probably 10, I decided and declared to myself, I'm never going to try coffee. I never want to be addicted to coffee. I don't want to have a part of coffee. So I don't even have coffee in the house. I don't care if you drink coffee. I've got no personal problem with that. But that, and that's just a really superficial thing. That's not really a big deal thing, but that's something that's important to me. Um, so there are all sorts of things I don't like that I know that this is a part of who I am. This is a part of myself. Um, and there is lots of things, there are a lot of things that I do like as well. I love seeing people um, face their challenges. I love seeing people be vulnerable and really step outside of their comfort zone. I like seeing people have a go. I like seeing people talk and speak their truth. I like seeing people walk their talk. And, um, you know, these things are really important to me to observe. So I feel like there's this opening this week in regards to our theme, in regards to the truth, full stop. So the truth of who you are, the truth of what's important to you, the truth of what's not important to you, the truth of where you're going, where you are in life, what you want from life. What about your life right now and the person that you are does not match with your truth. If I was a big no to coffee, for example, yet I was drinking coffee in secret behind the scenes uh, every chance I got uh, behind closed doors in private, then I'm not living and honouring that truth that's important to me. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, let's make sure we're walking our talk. Let's make sure when we establish what our truth is and maybe it's connected with that epiphany and that penny dropping, when we know what that is, let's make sure that we are living aligned with that truth, that we're not going against it, that we're being authentic in ourselves and in regards to how we're living aligned with that. So joy, truth, 
transformation, this light energy potentially our theme this week, which feels really uplifting. So are you ready to be uplifted? It's up to you to um, uplift yourself. And hopefully something that I've shared may help give you some food for thought and maybe something to apply that feels right for you. So thanks so much for joining me today. Um, have a great week ahead. Happy birthday, happy anniversary if you're celebrating. And I look forward to connecting with you again next time. So take care of yourself and namaste.